Happy Monday everyone, how's everyone doing? I hope everyone's having a great time and enjoying the games that they're playing. Right now we're going to take a Kingdoms Come Deliverance 2 and this is going to be Neon's Knight hands-on review uh, reaction. He's given us an update of what he's seen, what he's witnessed and uh, I'm really interested to hear this because the first game was amazing. Although it took me like over a year to get it and then play it. I enjoyed it and that's because I'm not gonna lie that the combat was just difficult okay uh, I didn't understand the combat but after you know plowing through and actually sticking with it it ended up being an absolute amazing game the story is amazing the whole world everything is amazing basically so I have high hopes and I'm hoping I hear everything and the right wording and everything from this uh, reaction and the reason behind that is that right now in the gaming space developers can't be trusted and gaming publishers can't be trusted as they will review a video or release a video of a video game and by the time the game comes out it's like completely different so it's just like false hope and it's just a lot of disappointment so i want to get someone's hands-on and i feel like hands-on reviews now are the only reviews that are important uh, well, as long as the person is being honest, <laughs> we're hoping that Neon Knight is a honest person, okay? So let's just have a look. Two. Because I'm a mega fan of the first game, to put it mildly, Warhorse were kind enough to invite me all the way out to Prague so I could check the sequel out. And I spent my time there asking questions and taking about a notebook's worth of notes with the specific purpose of trying to answer all okay. or most all well, of guns. the big non-spoiler questions I know fans have. Like how your choices from the first game are factored into the sequel, because some are. And where the fuck Henry's old girlfriend Teresa is, and what happens when you go on a murderous <laughs> rampage, and, well, there's a lot to get to, and I specifically delayed this video until a few days after the embargo so I could see what big questions people still had, and could focus this video and my impressions up, make it very to the point, and zero in on what's actually interesting to people. Make sense? Yes? No? Well, either. Everything that he said so far is very good. We like that he's delayed it and he's answering all the questions so let's get in and understand exactly what these questions are the way we have spoken enough let us do it now before hitting the finer details i have to get the big one out of the way first in one maybe two sentences what did i think of kcd2 overall and uh well how should i say it in terms of gameplay kcd2 is the first game all over again but with five years of polish and major improvements to what was already there Warhorse have refused to stray from their original vision here, and while I know some of you will disagree with what I'm about to say, in my opinion, that's exactly why KCD2 is going to be great. That's what I wanted, and I think it would have been a huge shame if Warhorse had thrown out the unique gameplay systems of KCD1 that maybe needed some work but were already 60-70% of the way there. They haven't thrown really anything out though. Instead, almost everything has been refined and given more depth, with only one gameplay system being simplified a bit. You know what guys that's absolutely amazing so as as you can you know if, you, if you've been listening um they've kept everything in the original game uh so far and only enhance it which is is very good and i understand that many of you probably won't have played this game and if you do play it, it you won't understand the combat but the combat is absolutely amazing once you understand it and you have the armor to get into certain fights and we all know the mace was OP as hell. <laughs> Once you got the mace, right, the mace was just so powerful. Like, you could just knock out enemies left, right, and centers. And unlocking the strikes from the skills tree, uh, that was all good. So, uh, I'm happy with everything that I've heard so far. These are the right affirmations and wording that I'm looking for. And I'm glad that Warhouse... Um, is it warhouse they've stuck to basically the original game and just built to it that is great to hear that of course being the combat or i should say early game combat has been simplified i'm someone who put hundreds of hours into kcd1 learned every combo with every weapon just because and how warhorse have approached combat this time around is not a complaint but just a reality i'd like to quickly get out of the way for the record, my first three hours with the game were the game's beginning, getting as far as I could in those three hours. And completely unlike the first game, KCD2's combat is pretty easy right away, even after you get hit with an early game skill reset, which I'll talk about in a minute. Stat-wise, stamina, health, etc., you're in pretty solid shape from the get-go. 
This being a sequel, that makes sense story-wise, but more importantly, the actual combat system has been, let's say, streamlined. That's a nicer word, right? With Swords, the original five-star directional system has been reduced to four. The two bottom prongs have been melded into one, which is now a poke to the chest, and I was told that weapons like a mace or an axe or even your fists have even fewer attack zones, though I only had experience with the fist fighting, okay. which was down to three. Is that simplification a problem when you're actually playing? In my opinion, at least when it comes to swords, because that's what I had quite a bit of time with, the answer is no. The combat feels exactly how you'd expect it to after a studio much larger than it was when it made the first game now has had five years to polish a system that already existed. You know, let's just stop it here again. Uh, talking about it, um, they did, he did say that obviously the combat is now more streamlined and... I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because the first game, like I say, it took me over a year to get into actually buying the game. And um, actually, once you bought the game from there, like I say, it takes a while to understand the combat system. So I'm happy that it has been streamlined and that it'll allow more people to get into it straight away because I'm not going to lie, it did take me at least probably 15 hours to figure out the combat and the combos to be able to survive in most fights i died a lot this is one game where i have died a lot i've seen something and i've questioned it and i'll just try to attack someone pickpocket someone and it's just gone wrong okay so it's, it was very punishing so um i'm glad that the combat has been streamlined i kind of hate this word but it all feels very smooth no more constant slow-mo fighting the camera and random low-level peasants master striking you, all positives in my book. <laughs> and what I love most is that there's much more, way more of an emphasis and incentive to learning combos this time around, if you want to. You no longer need to know how to edit your videos. Okay. With one click, like Powder will find all the best moments from your gameplay and create a compelling video for you. My overall takeaway though, before moving on to the crime system, is that I think the main motivation for early game holding your hand a little bit was to not scare players off before they'd even given the game a proper chance. That's a good The take. prologue section is full of conversations where Henry and Hans come pretty close to just looking directly at the camera to catch you up on the first game if you didn't <laughs> play it or if you don't remember. And similarly, the combat really eases you in this time. Toby, the community manager over at Warhorse, put it this way. In KCD1, they wanted the combat to be easy to learn and hard to master. They succeeded at only one of those things. KCD2, and these are my words now, seems like the attempt to achieve both by lowering the entry point while also raising the mid to late game skill ceiling for the refined weapons, like swords. Because my second session jumped me 50 hours into what Warhorse said is around a 100 hour game, and it was clear then that the combat really opens up once you're past the let's get you comfortable stage. Point is, if you just want to run around flattening people's skulls. See, one thing that um, I actually want to see without a mod, and I know this is going to be crazy ask, I would like to see a... Mm. Really? Mm. Yeah, I, I would like to see the ability to dismember, uh, like, heads, uh, hands, feet, all that kind of stuff without, like, a mod being built to allowing us to do that. So I'd like to see us uh, have a dismembering, dis, dismembering system in place and maybe an option uh, in order to put that on. I understand that some streaming sites won't really appreciate that being there, but having that uh, like from start to finish would actually be really intriguing. And that's the same for you. It'd be good to just see my head uh, basically rolling down a cliff <laughs> with a game over coming over it, all right? I don't know, just just like something to just add to it. I feel like that should be there. Gulls without really having to think about it, that's There's fine. Pick up something like a mace. The main strat with those in KCD1 was just bonking people on the head anyway. <laughs> but if you're committed and want to sink... Okay, okay, let's have a look at the UI. Okay, okay. Okay, ooh, it looks very... um, looks very neat. So we've got map, journal, inventory, player, crafting. Okay, crafting. Could we craft on the first game? Can't remember. Could we? Could you craft on the first game? Okay. Noise. Okay, he's got a heavy piece of armor there. Okay. Okay. Speed, charisma, speech. All right. It's a lot of armor points. Man, that is amazing. All right, all right, that looks Your teeth neat. into a system with even more depth than the first game, at least at higher levels, 
Well, grab a longsword and start learning your combos. But don't get cocky. You have to train hard and persistently. One last thing about the combat, because I did mention that skill reset. I'll leave it very vague to avoid spoilers, but KCD2 does exactly what you already thought it would there, or probably thought it would. It feels like in the lead up to every open world sequel ever, people start coming up with crazy crackpot theories as to how your character not being overpowered anymore will be explained in the narrative. But then, 99% of the time, that sort of thing is either ignored entirely, which in my opinion is perfectly fine, or you get an oops I lost my stuff and also I tripped and have a boo boo now moment, which is more or less exactly what happens right away in KCD2. And it's once that happens where you're able to start building your Henry the way you want to, because the character model looks clean though, right? Just like KCD1, you're given some dialogue options that let you boost whichever stats you choose to make up for some of what you lost. Keep in mind though, if you don't like what you're hearing here, this setback is nowhere near a factory reset for Henry. It just brings him back down to earth. His stats are still fine immediately after I had to fight multiple enemies at once and it wasn't an issue. And on the non-combat side, Henry still has his dog Mutt and his horse Pebbles. Oh. He can still read, and even with systems like Alchemy, you can... Well, you know what? I'll get back to that, because I keep promising to get to the crime system, and I keep not doing Let's it. So it. to lead into it, because this is the whole reason I even got to experiment with crime, I do have a negative in that I experienced two major bugs. The first happened to multiple other people, so it wasn't just me, but one of the very first quests has an optional objective to bury two random bodies. The second one just disappeared on me, swallowed deep into the depths of Bohemia, and, well, I was meant to bury it, so close enough, I guess, though I wasn't able to complete the objective. And as for the other bug I experienced, well, long story very, very short, but basically my wanted status from stealing something, because I stole something, conflicted with the quest I was supposed to be doing and just kicked me out of it. And someone from Warhorse was watching me at the time and came over to write down what happened because it wasn't meant to happen. Now, I will admit it's Okay, I'm all right with those. I'm absolutely fine with those. Um, as it's it's not been released yet. Okay, if that's released and at least someone was there to come and you know write down the bug and hopefully they can fix that. Uh, so I'm I'm glad that obviously there was there to make note of that. But obviously I wouldn't want that in the release. So that's good. That's good that there was there to fix it. It's hard not to be a little worried about bugs, but. Considering Warhorse have confirmed that the world, game is though, essentially man. done and that, that they're so just good. working on bug fixes between now and the new that release so date good. of February next year, I'm going to remain optimistic. Get to work, then. The silver lining there, in a silver mining town, is that I then <laughs> had about half an hour to just run around Kutenberg messing with the crime, reputation, and branding system, and I loved what was there. For what? one, when you're wanted, you is can now branded? press a button and pull up a little status table that will tell you everything you're wanted for, even when you're wanted for multiple crimes. And when guards track you down, they're way more specific than in KCD1, where half the time you'd have no idea what you'd even done, and the guard would just say something like, Next time you'll think long and hard about whatever <laughs> it was you were doing. That is so that true. Will land you a fat fine. Now, if you publicly kill someone in KCD2, which I did, I just attacked some guards out of nowhere, then after surrendering, the punishments are way more in-depth. Instead of a time skip in jail, you'll be publicly branded in a pretty brutal cutscene. And after I was branded, I did get to see some of the consequences of having a brand. NPCs would comment on it, shopkeepers wouldn't serve you at all, they'd have unique quotes like, Get out of here, you're branded, no way, which wouldn't go away until the mark healed. And as far as reputation goes, because believe it or not, killing people does... Okay, let's listen to that. So the mark healed. Now, um, so shopkeepers have an issue with that. I, again, I'm, I'm okay with the what I, so far what I've heard of the crime system. And that's mainly because, like, it is really good to steal stuff in this game if you can get away with it. And uh, being at the right place in the right time definitely helps. Like, sometimes you can be just be uh, traveling. I never really fast traveled. So if you was traveling and you, you led an ambush, and sometimes you'll have chests or enemies that you knock out or kill, and they have absolutely crazy loot that can take you from feeling less powered to being almost like overpowered if you had the ability to still it's, you still needed the ability to understand and fight within the game but it gave you like a much difficult chance as long as you had like the armor kits the tailor kits the blacksmith kits uh in order to repair your armor and stuff like that so the crime system so far seems very interesting and uh, i want to know more about it so far, I'm okay with it. it. Hasn't really impressed me, but I'm okay with it. ...affect your reputation, you do have an option to fix your rep quickly now. 
I was told you can just find a priest who will send you on a pilgrimage that fixes your rep for the entire region. Or, just like in the first game, you can also just give a bunch of money to the church, which, uh, <laughs> well, I just read a book about the war that's about to break out in Bohemia at the time of KCD2, and I guess what I'd say is, uh, that tracks. Well, this Jan Hu's character is quite a rebel. Oh, the congregation will love it! Now, many of the other crime-related systems we haven't yet talked about, but I did get to mess with, are near identical to the first. I'm limited on the gameplay I have to work with here, but lockpicking is very similar, just looks a little nicer. Stealth in general feels just like it did before, although you can now throw items as distractions or use your whistle as one. And from my experience, it also felt like, in terms of approach, you have even more options than in KCD1, which wasn't really slacking in that regard, but for example, Kutenberg has a lot of underground areas, so certain houses can be robbed from below. Ooh. The game also has... Right, let's have a look at this again. So weapons, armor, food, books, materials, quest, other horses. So the book, um, I'm actually liking that they have a book tab now because there's still loads of um, books from the first game, which I've not read. And I've got them in like a storage chest um, or they're on my horse uh, inventory uh, as I've not got around to reading them yet. So that is amazing to see that they've got specifically a book tab because uh, I don't believe there was a book tab before in the first game. And if there is a book tab, I've just never seen it. And I don't know why I've not seen it, because I've spent a lot of time in the inventory uh, finding like my alchemy items and things like that. I don't think anyone would disagree that that would have been very, very nice to have in game one. To get back to crime, though, and... <laughs> It's a weird quote. NPCs are also much smarter in responding to what you do, because even okay. if you don't get caught committing a crime, if you're spotted leaving, they'll figure you out and report you to the authorities. Murder. I found a body. Now, alchemy is actually a pretty good segue into how KCD2 respects your KCD1 playthrough, if you had one. With systems like alchemy, and I assume lockpicking and pickpocketing, you're able to direct... You know what? Alchemy in the first game was amazing. Uh, once I learned, I actually learned this by accident because uh, I didn't understand alchemy, but I accidentally craft a uh, lullaby and um, like when I got that and then sneaking into camp and putting like the enemies to sleep and stuff absolutely changed like one of the level. I was stuck on one of the missions and when I did that, it, was just, it just made everything so easy. So I like to see stuff like again where you can put it, your poisons um or your lullabies into basically pots and when enemies eat it it has that effect and it's, it's that was amazing that was absolutely amazing directly tell the game how much experience or lack of you have with those systems which changes dialogue and the tutorial itself it doesn't give you a stat or level boost or anything but because all of those systems are super similar to the first game and because your stats from the beginning are already fine well, the transition into KCD2 is seamless, plus you still have something to work towards within those systems, because with alchemy, for example, potions you brew now have different versions that you can build up as you increase in alchemy experience. Okay. There's medium, strong, and... Okay, Night Awe. Let's look at these strong Bane. Oh, the poison, there we go. Strong Dollar Maker. Ooh, what the hell is that? That sounds lethal. Uh, so, inventory slots, okay. So this is, the weight is still not that bad. And weak potions, I believe. And at least with Savior Schnapps, the game-saving potion, which is now called Remedium Save Gamium, the potion's strength determined how many times it could be used. So if you brew oh, okay. a strong one, you could save a bunch of times using only one potion. I'd say you need it after a hard like that. By the way, like that. that Remedium Save Gamium name, I'm assuming is a placeholder or just a joke, because Warhorse keep calling it... Okay, okay. Save That's... your schnapps, but... Yeah, there is no book section from the first game. All right, yeah, because I'm like, yeah, yeah, it looks so much neater though, right? The uh, UI, the UI looks clean, definitely looks clean. In both the gameplay reveal and the build I played, it was called the other name, though they just keep referring to it as the old name. Well, never mind. KCD2 respecting your KCD1 experience also translates over to the story though. Throughout the prologue section, which I'd say is about two hours, there are a bunch of moments where you can establish your Henry from the first game. I won't go over every single one, but most importantly, you can set what your relationship with Teresa in the first game was. That Hasey gets into places it shouldn't, and itches like mad. Henry, you donkey. <laughs> There's a scene maybe ten minutes into the game where Henry, Hans, and the other men they ride out with at the end of the first are sitting around a campfire, and 
Hans is talking about hitting up the inn to find some ladies, which might sound familiar if you remember the Butcher's Daughter quest from the first game. Who shall yep. suck my salty bits? Afterwards, though, he starts asking Henry about Teresa, and you can tell the game whether she's just a girl who saved Henry's life, because that's pretty much the only non-optional thing she does in the first one, or whether she's Henry's girlfriend, and what you say changes dialogue later on. Would you still care for me, a common millmaid, if you were a nobleman? Of course. I'll always be fond of you. Nothing will change that. I'll remember that. I hope you won't regret those words. That's that laptop good, rage. Man. I've got this. Fun fact, by the way, the new girl that keeps getting shown in trailers and promotional art, I call her Timoriza, but her actual name is Catherine. You can see a brief look at her name in a okay. short promo video that Warhorse just released a couple days before this video is going up. Anyway, another example of inputting your first game choices would be after the tutorial duel with Hans. He then brings up the duel with him from the first game, which was also part of a combat tutorial, and you can set whether you lost that duel or won it. You got the better of me this time, Blacksmith. <laughs> Be having an off day. Anyway, I remember when I beat Hans. Up, let's quickly talk. Look, oh man, look at that. All right, you cannot tell me, guys. This game is just beautiful, man. Oh my god. And you know what? The first game, it kind of looked like this as well the atmosphere and just how big the world looks. And just going into the forest, uh, I, I think one thing I'd like to see more is increasing the random events. I mean, there was okay in the first one because there was quite brutal when you got into those random events, but if the um, combat's going to be more streamlined, I would like to increase the random events to add up to having that streamlined combat, if you get what I mean. Like, the other one was acceptable, because when you got into a fight, it was like, I need to make sure I've got all my potions, I need to make sure I have money for my repairs, I can't get hit, your dog was there, so, you know, it was it was very brutal getting into like um, a fight that wasn't in part of a quest or anything. So I, I want to see how this one operates. Talk about the technical side of things, including hopefully putting your mind at ease about the audio, because if you know, you know. And also, by the way, if you've enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like as it really helps my content get out there. YouTube puts so much fucking stock in likes, and there will also be plenty more KCD2 coverage here, so feel free to subscribe if interested. Anyway, during my playtime, KCD2 ran perfectly, flawlessly, but that's while I was playing on a very high-end custom KCD2 PC that I think had a 4090 in it. That said, Warhorse did mention that they're feeling very good about PC performance in general, so that should put your mind at ease if you're a yeah. PC player. Something of note, though, is that when asked as to whether they were considering doing a performance and resolution mode for consoles, you know, one favoring frame rate, the other... Okay, let's have a look, let's have a look their graphics, they said no, just a flat outright no, at least not as of when the question was asked a couple weeks ago. Personally, I think by far the biggest launch risk KCD2 has right now, because the game itself is amazing, is the performance or maybe bugs, which is just another technical thing. That's the only hang up right now. Hopefully the optimization is at least acceptable, I don't think any of us want to melt down at launch because of a Dragon's Dogma 2 situation, but considering how beautiful the environments are in this game with hundreds of NPCs doing daily routines in places like Gutenberg, well, I'd be pretty shocked if consoles have anywhere near a steady 60 FPS mode at launch, and I think if you're expecting that, unfortunately, you'll probably be disappointed. My guess is a locked 4K30 for PS5 and Series X, and maybe 1440-30 for Series S, Again, hopefully steady 30 at least. I'm not too worried about it, as I'll be playing on PC, but not Same. everyone will I'll be. I'll be on so PC, finger... guys. Let me let me know what you guys think down below as well. Are you going to be on PC, Xbox, uh, PlayStation? Fingers crossed it's at least solid. On the audio side of things, though, well, did you notice that the voices in the 25-minute gameplay showcase sounded absolutely awful, like blown out and distorted? Here's an example. I'll gladly pay you. You certainly won't regret it. My bats are first class. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is not the game. That is the specific video Warhorse uploaded. I don't know what happened, oh, but someone messed so up, good. because in my time with KCD2, the audio was perfect. For comparison's sake, here's a clip of Henry talking in the gameplay showcase. Uh, I reckon you want to know who I am, right? I'm Henry. And here's a clip with much better audio in the extra footage press were sent to edit with. You're from Lord Bombergov. You don't look like it. I know most people don't care about that sort of thing at all, but I noticed it immediately, and there were enough comments pointing it out that, well, I had to say something. 
One last thing though, KCD2 does have cats now, I spotted a few in Kutenberg, and there is at least one in the gameplay reveal. 